Hey guys, my name is Big Tino, and welcome back to From the Depths, and welcome to the creative mode. Now, off camera, I have been doing some battles against the Lightning Hoods, and I have kept them off camera largely because they've just been sort of the same thing over and over. Uh, hey, look at this corny gun, shoot a bunch of tear lots. Uh, and so, in the interest of keeping the videos interesting, I will keep those off camera until we get to some more interesting battles that maybe we haven't seen before. So what I want to do today is actually build that submarine that I've been talking about for, oh, I don't know, two months now? Uh, so this will be one of those time-lapse videos where we build a submarine. And uh, now my goal, or my plan rather, for this submarine is for it to be a particle cannon-based submarine. I want that to be its primary weapon. Now, I think if I have the space for it, I will also have some dorsal missiles that uh, shoot up out of the water um, and, uh, you know, track air targets. Now, I don't want this thing to really use torpedoes, just because torpedoes aren't really going to be very good against the lightning hoods. They're skimmers like the corny god. And like the Corny God, torpedoes are not going to be able to catch them very well. Uh, so that's my goal. I don't want this thing to be super, super expensive. Um, maybe 350 or 400,000 points at the most. If I can get it cheaper than that, then great. I want it to be pretty energy efficient in terms of running, in terms of moving and stuff like that. I want it to have pretty light shielding so that it doesn't use a ton of energy for that, so that it can use all of its energy for its particle cannon, uh, or particle cannons. I think we might have more than one. Um, other than that, yeah, I... I have an idea in my head, I have something that I, I'm kind of picturing, but as usual I don't have a plan laid out in front of me. Um, I think the... The last time I had a plan laid out, or the only time I've had like an actual plan laid out before I go into building, uh, was all the work that I did on the dark mantle. And even that wasn't like, I mean, I, I got out some graph paper, but, um, you know, it, it wasn't like, uh, like a very thorough plan. All right, well, I'm going to get building, and I'll check back in once I have uh, something to show for what I'm doing.
Okay, so we've got a basic shape going on here. Obviously, I'm going to need to change the front a bit to match with the body. Uh, I always worry... Hey, it's Mickey Mouse. I always worry when I first start building a new ship that it's going to turn out to be really, really bland. But it, it always happens like this. Like, you, you start to get a basic shape, and then you just sort of build up and design around that basic shape. So... Uh, it's got like these three big turbines here that'll propel it forwards. Uh, I don't worry, I'm gonna balance this out to where it actually comes in underneath the propeller rather than uh, leaving this giant gap here. Uh, and so my goal next is to start putting down the weapons. So what I'm thinking is that this back section here, uh, after the the internal turbines there, uh, this back section will be the housing for um, the particle cannons. And I'd want one on each side. They will be on turrets so that they can look up and down. And I'm thinking I might actually want... I can't decide whether I want two of them, so one on each side, or four of them with, with two on each side. I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards having four of them. So one is a turret that sticks out just right here, and then the next that comes out a bit farther. And so I'm, I'm thinking that's how it's probably going to work. And then sort of in the in this dorsal area here between them, uh, I can have some missile launchers. And those missiles will be the kind that uh, they break the surface uh, and then they fire. Um, so let me <laughs> let me fix this little bit here so we're not being really really derpy i i see i see the problem I, you know it's uh this is the center of where it should be whereas this is you know where the center actually is which is just silly so i just need to move this whole thing over one and i'm not gonna make you watch that i will start this back up once i have rounded this out a bit better Okay, that looks a little better. Probably gonna have to rework it some more. The uh, the little tweaks in hull design uh, usually come a little closer to the end for me. And it's entirely possible that the turbines here will be completely closed off from view from the outside anyway. So, uh, you know, it's probably gonna be more important how they look on the outside, and right now I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, the you know, I'm going to need to style things up a bit. I'm actually thinking, since this is going to be a particle cannon ship, to make it a little more... Uh, I don't want to say steampunky, but I do want, like, more pipes and, and uh, neon lights and stuff jutting out of places everywhere. But uh, all that stuff comes towards the end once we have the, the actual ship itself built, and then we can style it up however we want. So let's get to building those particle cannons. Okay, now that I think about it, this particle cannon building part here is probably going to be a nausea-inducing twisted uh, section of uh, pipes snaking around all over the place. So I'll probably come back in once I actually have the particle cannons built and we can do some of the more interesting building on camera and less, you know, nausea. <laughs> I'm actually kind of liking how it looks. It, it looks very much like something that requires a whole lot of tech to make it fire. Uh, this is actually a, a very big particle cannon. Uh, this turret by itself costs about 75,000 points, which is a pretty big cannon. Um, obviously, it will need some tweaking, I'm sure. Uh, it's also going to need a paint job like everything else, but for now, it has some detail to it, which I'm happy with. And I think probably I'm going to be sticking with just the two uh, railgun turrets. I think behind this, we're going to go with some missile launchers. And then we will, uh, I guess, sort of finish up the design. There's not going to be a whole lot else to this thing. I'll probably need a, a bit more in terms of energy power for this. 
So I will build a couple more of those engines. I'll build a few more batteries, things like that, probably just in uh, like sort of a bank around the missile pod in the back. And then we will wrap this thing up. So let's get back to building.
all right, I think it's shaping up pretty well. I've left myself some room back here to add a bit more engine power to it. Uh, this thing is going to have very light shields, if any shields at all, just because it's going to be under the water and that provides a good amount of protection anyway. Uh, it's got a nice battery of uh, missiles there. I'm going to use the exact same missiles that the corny gun uses because those have been very, very effective against the lightning goods so far. Just that they will have a, little, a, a few little modifications to make sure they can get out of the water. Um, now, like I said, I am going to go back and touch up the front a bit here. Obviously, you know, these are just bland tubes with a weird protruding nose here, so there will be a lot of work done there. And if you're wondering why I've left a giant gaping hole around the turret, it's because I realized I'm going to have to kind of restructure the turret to make sure that it can fit flush with the vehicle. Uh, and so I'll do that off camera. So until that happens, there is just going to be a giant gaping hole around the uh, the turret. So I, you know, apologize for that. So I think what's left is... Obviously I need to do some storage stuff, right? I need to put uh, more fuel into this thing. I need to put some ammo into this thing. And then after that, I'm probably going to sort of bring the thing in into sort of a narrow tube that goes back and I'll have one more uh, propeller to make sure this thing can move. And then the central propeller will move, uh, will go all the time, and then the ones on the sides here, they'll stop if it needs to turn, that sort of thing, and there'll be some turning propellers on the back as well. Because it is important that this thing faces its target. Uh, I, you know, the particle cannons on the sides here they can move up and down, but they can't move left and right. And so they will need to, uh, the entire ship will need to aim at whatever it's shooting at in order for that to happen. Now, that's something that could change. That's something that I could decide, hey, this entire bottom part here, I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to make this a two axis turret, and then it can swivel around like a weird sort of spindly arm. Uh, and that depends on whether or not it can actually hit its targets effectively. Uh, because it is going to have to be able to turn pretty quickly in order to keep up with the Lightning Hood ships. Okay, so I'll get back to building. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wrap up the back of the hull here. And then off camera, I'm going to do some little tweaks uh, to make sure that, you know, everything fits flush. I may even do a little bit of designing on uh, the front here off camera because my designing phase is is usually a lot of me waffling back and forth. Not that the rest of my phases aren't me waffling back and forth, but the designing phase in particular, I'm probably going to be going back and forth about a lot of different ways I can style this up some. Uh, it's probably going to end up looking a little similar to the back here, but again, I, I don't want that to be... Uh, just sort of my copy-paste design. I do want something a bit different for the uh, for the front here. So yeah, let's let's finish off the back, and then we'll come back. Uh, and I'll and I'll I'll cut for a bit, and I'll come back once some of the more boring stuff and waffling stuff is done. <laughs>
right, checking in, and this is what we've got so far. Still have not fixed the gaping holes in the sides of the ship yet. Uh, that's going to take a little bit more work than I was originally thinking, which is going to suck, but oh well. Uh, I've decorated the front just a bit, and I'm liking it more. I just sort of cut the head off already. Uh, and I figure I'll go ahead and make the uh, building of the head in the recording itself. And so that we have, you know, an actual, um, <laughs> at least some of the design phase uh, on camera, which will be nice. But yeah, this is what I've done so far. Um, I hate how these things, the radiators, are red when uh, when it, when you're in build mode and they're not connected. I get that it makes sense, and in fact, I've made use of the fact that things that are not connected properly are red uh, more times than it's annoyed me by far. But I still have, you know, I'm human and can complain about things illogically. So I'm still debating how I'm going to do uh, the front here. I'm thinking that the all of the these sort of turbine sections are going to end a little abruptly and then sort of out of the center we'll have a sort of cockpit area and then I'll connect it somehow to the turbines. Uh, I'm thinking maybe even with truss blocks or something like that but you know as with most things in my designs it's just gonna take some time. Um, and figuring things out and waffling and all that sort of stuff. So let's get back into the design. We're getting close to finishing this thing up and uh, I, I really want to test this thing out because those are easily the biggest particle cannons I've ever built uh, and I'm excited about blasting something with them. So let's get back into it. <laughs> All right, that's nice and silly looking, right? <laughs> it's it's like the front of a uh, of a of a, a cargo truck or something, um, complete with headlights. Uh, but it's I actually quite like it. It's it's weirdly stumpy and um, it's just I don't know. It's 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 fun. It doesn't. It's inoffensive in its own quirky way. Um, all right, so I think. That's going to be the majority of the design phase of this thing, um, and also the whole building and, and everything like that. Obviously, I'll need to 
connect this turbine to the bottom, and I need to fill in the big hole there, uh, and that sort of thing. It's going to need a nice coat of paint. Um, but for the most part, <laughs> uh, look at this thing. It's so, it's so, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it reminds me of some sort of bodybuilder whose entire body is just massive, except for his tiny little head. Um, okay. All right. So I think I'm, I think I'm, well, clearly I'm happy with it. I mean, clearly I'm, I'm laughing at this thing and that's good enough for me uh so i'm going to do the boring stuff now which is to do all the inner workings uh sort of refit the turrets and actually fit into the hull um work on this bottom section here a bit uh put turning propellers and uh pitch propellers and set up pids and pretty much put the amount of time that I've already put into this thing into it again in order to make it actually function uh, and not just be a, a derpy block of metal. So I will do that and I'll be back ideally when this thing is ready to shoot something. All right, after a good bit of work, this seems to be at least close to the final form this thing is going to take. I made it darker than the rest of my ships, just because it is supposed to be a submarine, you know, and the whole idea of the submarine is to be unnoticed. Uh, now, a few specs about this thing. It has some very light shielding, mostly on the front and the top, a little bit on the sides, uh, although certainly nothing that's going to stop, you know, a, a dedicated attack. It's definitely relying on being under the water to protect itself for the most part. Now, that being said, it does have anti-torpedo uh, torpedo interceptors on the front here, which I've tested just a little bit, and they work enough. Um, let's see, what else? It has a whole bank of missiles back here. These are the same missiles that the Cornigon uses, so they're pretty good. Uh, it's also got some sonar and radar buoys here to help it see things that are above the water. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> Witness my Star Wars-esque solution to the gap problem and be amazed. Yes, I... It would have been a complete rework to, to get this thing to fit flush, and so instead I sealed off the compartment that's on the inside of here, armored it up a bit, and then just put a shield there, an, an opaque shield, uh, to sort of give it that, that hangar bay look, uh, which I find that I'm quite pleased with. Um... The underside, normally I don't pay a whole lot of attention to with ships. I actually find that I quite like this. I quite like how this worked out. Um, I think probably what I'll do is I'll work some things around to make these uh, propellers be on the inside of the ship rather than on the outside like that. I like the sort of sleek look it has otherwise. I mean, I, didn't, I don't know if sleek is the right word, but sort of, you know, not propeller look that it has. Um, it operates fully on RTG power until it needs to ch recharge the batteries from firing, at which point the engines kick on. The engines are very, very fuel efficient. They sip it gently, as opposed to the other things that I, I have built. Um, I'm finding, I, I, looking at it now, I need to sort of round off the sides of these turret uh, housings here, which I'll do. Um, I've spent a little bit of time adjusting its PID system to make sure that it, it, it floats, or rather it sinks, uh, to a stable uh, minus 50 meters, which is pretty good. Uh, it's, it's pretty balanced. Now, I, I have found, and I may go back and tweak this some more, I have found that uh, its roll is just a little jerky. It goes back and forth a bit once it hits a stable altitude. Um, if I can find a way to balance that better, I will, but if not, I'm not going to worry about it uh, because it does it does need a very uh, reactionary roll system just because these arms it has are very, very heavy, and when it starts to move them, it starts to roll. So I've done some very light testing with this thing so far, but mostly I wanted to save it shooting something uh, until uh, I started recording. So now these... Uh, these particle cannons are programmed to fire EMP, 
so hopefully that's going to do some nasty things to the lightning hoods. Um, but I do want to test against a Marauder first, because, you know, that's kind of what you do. <laughs> I like how it looks under the water. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with this so far, by the way. I, I, um, I really, really like how this thing has turned out. It's, it's just a fun looking sort of ship. Um, I, I'd hate to, but I may even take the, the front of this part off because I do like how it looks without that, but I'm not sure. We'll, th those are all aesthetic things I can do later. For now, let's blow something up. So here comes a Marauder. Now again, the Marauder is made mostly of wood. So the MP is probably not going to do a whole lot. Uh, hopefully the missiles will sort of take care of that. Here come the missiles. All right, so I'm, I'm finding I need to change their activation delay to be a little shorter. But it does look like those missiles are coming up and hitting pretty well. The ship itself is aiming to where it can fire its particle cannons. All right, there's the first and the second, and it's AI dead immediately. <laughs> that was lovely. Uh, so yeah, right now the missiles are set on a, on a um, thrust delay of three seconds. I'll probably need to reduce that to about two and a half or something like that. Uh, but those are easy little tweaks I can do off camera. Um, I'm seeing that I'm going to need to add a new ammo storage. You can kind of see there that uh, the ammo is um, it's quite low. I'm also seeing that the charge is not uh, going up very quickly, which is interesting um, because the engines aren't actually running at the moment. Uh, so I've clearly, yeah, we've got maximum drive set to zero on these for some reason. All right, clearly I have, uh, actually, I think I know what it is. I think I may have programmed this to be wrong. I know exactly what it is. I skipped a step when I was programming this. So let's see. Fuel engines, battery charging. So let's, sorry, I would normally do this off camera, but this is going to be a very, very small fix. So let's set RPM. There we go. Okay, that's all I needed to do. I had set the, uh, the battery charge to be at 100%. Um, when uh, its battery got low, but I hadn't set the RPM to be at 100% when the battery got low. So it charges very, very quickly, and its fuel goes down very, very slowly. All right, so let's save this and try it again. I am naming this the Aboleth, by the way. The Aboleth is a terrible underwater creature that, uh, with its tentacles, inflicts the Aboleth poisoning, and it makes your skin slough off if you uh, get out of the water. It's lovely. All right, let's... <laughs> let's blow up something uh, of the Onyx watch. Let's let's see if we can take a bulwark with this thing. Um, that would be interesting. Let's see how we do with this. Uh, just because it is so much metal that it has. I may need to set, I think, all right, 37,000 uh, EMP damage right off the start which was great. Looks like we took just a slight bit of damage. This, this thing is probably not really going to be able to do this very well. Um, I have not added repair bots to this thing, as I'm realizing now. Uh, I might need to... I might need to improve the accuracy of, of these cannons. Although, again, very, very nice hits there. We've destroyed two of their AIs, by the way. Just because their uh, their hit point, the uh, the ship's health has not gone down that much, doesn't mean we haven't been doing stuff. The, the bulwark normally has three AIs; it's down to just one. Um, so yeah, I'll need to improve the accuracy of these things. I think I'm going to maybe underclock them just a little bit, uh, just so that just so that they can fire at full effect uh, every time they fire, so the, the engines have time to uh, uh, to fully recharge the thing. Um, 
so what what else i'm i'm also seeing i need to give a longer uh staggered fire time to the missiles themselves because when one of them gets blown up the it, it sets off a chain reaction and i don't want that to happen uh, i'm i'm liking i'm liking how it has worked out to where this thing just sort of faces the enemy and backs off and swivels around to where it can fire um yeah, I'm definitely going to need to improve the accuracy. Uh, maybe lower the damage a little bit. How, though? How, though? It always has to happen. I should stop putting my cockpits at the very front of the ships. Okay. So I'm, I'm definitely liking it. Uh, particle cannons are interesting because they take a lot of tweaks. Like, you, you really have to tweak them to make them work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to futz around with them just a little bit, and we'll come back for one more test fight, and that'll be it. So I'll be back once I have messed around with these settings up. Okay, so I've made a whole bunch of tweaks. Uh, I have tested it a bit to make sure it's, it's uh, in a place where I like it, and I'm feeling pretty good about it at the moment. I'm finding that for the most part, I don't need to reduce uh, the... I don't need to undercharge the particle accelerated cannons because most ships are not going to be in its firing line all the time. It's going to have the time to recharge. Something like the Bulwark, which is essentially stationary, uh, is, is going to be a fairly rare thing to be fighting at this stage in the game. So let's, let's make this relevant to us. Let's spawn in a scorpion, and let's see how we do. It, all right, spawned pretty much right on top of me. There go, these are the anti-torpedo torpedoes, and you can see they do a really, really good job of hunting down and just obliterating enemy torpedoes. Yeah, nothing gets through that. Um, at least none of those got through that. It looks like we did get it with a good hit from the EMP cannons. Uh, it looks like it might have slowed down a little bit even. There's another EMP hit. Might have turned off its laser there. Now, the, uh, <laughs> the programming or the, the AI of the Aboleth is an interesting thing because it's designed to never broadside and always be either moving directly towards or directly away from the enemy. Our missile's doing a really good job there. Uh, and since it moves forward and backwards with, you know, equal speed, it calculates its intercept course based on either direction. So you can see it's it's actually got its intercept course to be able to shoot it in the back, or shoot it from the back now. So it's it's sort of turning so that its its uh, particle cannons can fire at this thing as it moves around behind it. And so then we should. There we go. I think we may have missed it that time, though. Or we may have just hit something that's not vulnerable to EMP. Uh, that is that is one thing I'm, I'm finding as I'm testing this thing. Either you hit something that's vulnerable to EMP and you do a lot of really nasty damage, or you don't. Uh, there's, no, there's no plinking away with EMP, at least not really. Um, so here we go again. We are setting ourselves up to now fire at it facing forwards. And it should be passing just about directly above us, so hopefully we can get a good shot on it there. Uh, we are... Ooh, that, that's, that's an issue that I'll have to address. When it goes backwards like that, it's forcing itself down into the water, down deeper into the water. And so we're at negative 80 meters rather than negative 50. So I think that's something I'm going to have to adjust. Maybe just uh, uh, an override control block that turns off propulsion, um, or at least that turns off the forward and backward propulsion if our depth gets to be below, let's say, negative 55. That way we, you know, we can kind of sit there stationary. I love, I don't know if you could see that, uh, but I, I love just the, the look of those, those torpedoes there. Um, again, they are completely defensive torpedoes. They're designed entirely to destroy enemy torpedoes. Um, 
but uh, but they do a very very good job of that. And in fact, this thing can act as uh, a, a sort of defense ship for other ships in the water as well because it is it is so good at just hunting down and destroying torpedoes. Um, now I'm I'm wondering what its criteria is because it it's set to launch only when it detects enemy torpedoes, not enemy missiles. But I'm wondering if it counts enemy missiles that have just gone underwater as torpedoes. We've gotten it down to 92% now. Uh, hopefully we can get a good shot at it here. Alright, well we fired and we missed. Now why did we miss there? We're still missing. Now, maybe maybe it's because these are sideways. Vertical is actually a horizontal. Maybe that's what's going on here. We should not have missed that. Because we've, we've hit much more difficult targets than that. Yeah, it looks like once again we are down deeper. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that, that did it. So we just did a ton of a, um, EMP damage, destroyed one of its AIs. All right, so yeah, it is certainly one of those ships that is going to take a lot of tinkering to get it just right. Uh, might have to <laughs> might have to limit the uh, the number of those those uh, torpedo interceptors that it can launch. Um, it looks like we have stripped the Scorpion's weapons off, though. It didn't really do any damage to us, and as you can see, our fuel is still very very high. We have gently gently sipped at our fuel reserves with this ship. That's because uh, it, it's got a lot of RTGs that power it, and it only turns on its fuel engines when it needs the extra power uh, in order to recharge the particle cannons. And looks like we've killed its AI. So yeah, it didn't take any damage there. Um, I, I still haven't added repair bots to this thing. Uh, if we did take any damage, then it was small enough for me to, uh, to use my avatar's uh, repair tentacles for that. So, pretty pleased with how this thing does now. It looks like it's going to be a, a pretty effective Lightning Hoods hunter. And so maybe between this and the Dark Mantle, this for the water vessels and the Dark Mantle for air vessels, we can start to really destroy the Lightning Hoods. Now, I haven't tested this thing against air targets saying that, uh, and now I'm really curious. So let's spawn in, <laughs> let's spawn in the Tachyon. And we'll just, we'll just see how we do. No idea if those particle cannons are going to have the range or the accuracy to really, uh, to do that. Need to hit this thing. That was not a promising start. <laughs> that was not a promising start. Although, like I said, this thing... Oh, there I go again. This thing does have the Cornugon's missiles. And so its missiles might be able to hit the, uh, the Tachyon. And it would probably help if I had started the uh, this fight with full ammo. Oh wow, we actually impeded that thing. We actually hit it. <laughs> so maybe, maybe this thing wouldn't be useless against air targets. Now I'm curious. Uh, it's not really doing a ton of damage to my ship. Uh, again, all right. Well, we we nicked it. It looks like that's what it's it's probably going to do. Um, because from underwater, your your detection of above water targets is somewhat limited. Like I said, this thing has radar buoys that it uh, tosses up to um, to uh, to get radar targets above the water, but it certainly does not have the the detection fidelity that say like a like the dark mantle's really over the top detection has. Um, yeah, we missed it completely there. And it's interesting what its missiles are doing. They really like to stay very close to the water, it seems. Uh, you can see, like, they, they pop up out of the water, and then they're just, they're already sort of turning. I, and I think that's because, yeah, you can see they, they're turning so horizontally before they actually get to the surface. And I think that's because they could probably use one more... 
uh, one more injector add-on. Another EMP hit. I think we'd actually win this fight given time. Um, they could probably all use an extra injector add-on just to get them above the water. Uh, but honestly, considering their target is surface vessels, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the fact that they come out of the water horizontal. Uh, ooh, we're rolling a bit there. Let's see if we can... Okay, yeah, we've stabilized. Probably it's because we're aiming at targets directly above us, and as we turn, these just massive arms are, are just yanking us over. Uh, and I think we may have damaged the Tachyon's uh, propulsion or navigation or something, because I don't think it's supposed to have just sort of launched itself into space like this. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I am pretty pleased with this thing so far. Oh, right. I died. Pretty pleased with it, honestly. It's... The fact that it's underwater makes it very hard for the Lightning Hood to damage us, because they have missiles and they have lasers, and missiles can't go underwater unless they're torpedoes, and we have very effective torpedo interceptors. And lasers, you know... You can see they're, they're barely doing anything to us from underwater. Uh, it's, it's possible I could even set this thing to go a little deeper. I could go maybe 75 meters down, uh, and that way... Ooh, actually, it looks like we lost that particle cannon, so maybe they are doing some damage to us. Maybe, maybe a bit more depth would be good, um, because certainly it, it has the capability to fire out. Uh, but that's that's all stuff I'm going to take around with off camera. The next time we hop in, I'm going to be back in the campaign. I'll hopefully spawn one of these things and we'll take the fight to the Lightning Hoods. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this build and I'll see you in the next video.